There's something about the early internet that I find fascinating, an atmosphere that's hard to describe but deeply memorable. It's a bit like the Frutiger Arrow aesthetic, vibrant, colorful, and full of life. Everything felt more atmospheric, simpler, and paradoxically more magical than the internet we know today. Websites back then had a special charm, animated intros, nostalgic background music, and a design that seemed like it was trying to take you somewhere. One of those nights, you were browsing through random websites just like people used to do in the 2000s. The only sound filling the silence was the steady hum of your computer's fan. Then suddenly, your screen started flickering. Something was off. A few seconds later, everything froze. Your system crashed, files disappeared, and the last thing you remember is clicking on a strange message in your inbox. At the time, it didn't seem like a big deal, just another random attachment. The file was called lostmemory.sgr, and its icon looked like a tiny gift box tied with a red ribbon. You hesitated, just for a moment, but you clicked. And without realizing it, you had just triggered one of the most devastating viruses ever created, the WannaCry virus. Within seconds, your computer became completely unusable. It all began on a Friday, May 12th, 2017. Before 8 a.m., something strange started happening on computers across Asia. Within hours, thousands of systems were locked down, encrypted, and rendered useless. Businesses ground to a halt. Hospitals faced serious threats to patient care. Banks, energy companies, and even entire government ministries were heavily impacted. Across 150 countries, over 230,000 computers were affected causing an estimated $8 billion in damages. The global cyber attack where hackers demanded money and exploited a dangerous security hole which froze hundreds of cyber thousands. attack has businesses around the world on high alert. The ransomware known as WannaCry has already- The moment you click the file, it began spreading on its own, exploiting a hidden vulnerability in the Windows operating system, an old security flaw known as SMBV1, used for network file sharing. This weakness allowed the virus to replicate itself, infecting other computers connected to the same network. It was a worm. This type of virus downloaded a Trojan program that secretly sent your email and internet login credentials back to the malware's creator, who, at that point, was still unknown. Once inside, the virus began encrypting the user's files, documents, photos, videos, everything became inaccessible, locked behind an unbreakable key. Meanwhile, a message popped up on the screen, demanding payment in Bitcoin to unlock the files, with a ticking countdown as a deadline. Panic set in for many users as they realized their data was trapped, unreachable, with no guarantee of recovery. Ordinary people suddenly found themselves hostages in a virtual ransom scheme, unsure whether to pay or risk losing everything forever. The fear and uncertainty spread just as quickly as the virus itself. But WannaCry didn't stop at just locking your computer. It actively scanned for other devices on the same network, exploited the same flaw, and automatically infected them too, creating a chain reaction of digital destruction. On top of that, once triggered, the virus installed itself without the user noticing. It began corrupting important files, photos, documents, music, leaving everything either inaccessible or damaged beyond repair. As soon as the file was opened, the computer began to lose its memory and behave erratically. As the virus continued to spread, teams of cybersecurity experts began investigating the attack, tracking down clues left in the infected emails and even embedded within the virus's code. It felt like a digital lightning storm, jumping from machine to machine, destroying everything in its path. But where exactly did such a sophisticated and dangerous virus come from? 
the digital weapon used by WannaCry was actually created by the NSA, the United States National Security Agency. A group known as the Shadow Brokers managed to steal and publicly leak a set of secret cyber espionage tools. Among them was the now infamous Eternal Blue exploit, the very flaw that opened the door for WannaCry to invade machines around the world. Microsoft had already released a patch to fix this vulnerability, but many systems were still outdated and left unprotected. As the threat escalated, cybersecurity teams across the globe went on high alert. Experts raced against the clock to try to contain the virus's spread. Governments and companies were forced to shut down entire networks, suspend critical systems, and even cancel services in a desperate attempt to stop the attack. Patients were redirected from hospitals. Factory lines came to a halt and even airports experienced delays due to the digital chaos. As the attack spread, drawing the attention of the global cybersecurity community, a 23-year-old British researcher named Marcus Hutchins, better known online as Malwaretech, noticed something odd about how the virus behaved. At the time, Hutchins was working for Cryptos Logic, a cybersecurity firm based in Los Angeles. While browsing through forums, he came across posts reporting a ransomware outbreak that was rapidly taking down systems across the UK's National Health Service. Suspecting that something wasn't quite right, especially given how consistently the malware was infecting machines, Hutchins theorized that this wasn't just a typical ransomware attack, it was likely a worm, capable of spreading on its own. He quickly reached out to a friend and asked them to send over a sample of the malware so he could analyze it and figure out exactly how it worked. After getting his hands on the sample, he ran it in a virtual environment, loaded with fake files and discovered something surprising. The program was trying to connect to an unregistered domain. Hutchins then registered that domain for just $10.69, which, unbeknownst to him at the time, would end up stopping WannaCry's infection dead in its tracks. But even with that breakthrough, the damage was already done. Thousands of systems remained hostage to the digital ransom, while investigations scrambled to uncover who was behind this devastating attack. Modified versions of WannaCry soon emerged like UIWix, which fixed some of the original's flaws, such as the hard-coded kill switch domain and the lack of individualized Bitcoin wallets. However, it didn't have the same ability to spread automatically. According to Trend Micro, WannaCry remained the most detected malware in the world as late as 2020. In the end, who's truly to blame? Is it the NSA for stockpiling dangerous exploits? The shadow brokers for leaking them? Microsoft for not patching sooner? Or the WannaCry creators themselves? To this day, no one knows for sure who created WannaCry. The leading theory points to the Lazarus Group, which is believed to have ties to North Korea, but nothing has ever been officially confirmed. And even if you have the most advanced, updated, expensive antivirus on the market, None of that can protect you from a single wrong click. In the end, maybe you've seen this story somewhere else here on YouTube, but I wanted to share it in my own way. So tell me, do you think this was the work of a hacker group or just a chain of dangerous decisions and pure negligence? Leave a comment below, I'd really love to hear your thoughts. This was Spell, and I'll see you in the next video.